Okay, so today we're going to show you mainly how I um, process my Hubble palette images and this is more or less the same uh, kind of workflow I use for, for all these type of, uh, of images. Um, and so first of all you'll see that we have our hydrogen alpha, sulfur, and oxygen data and that has all been stacked and aligned uh, to each other. So let's go ahead and grab our screen transfer function drop it here off to the side and let's see what uh, the data looks like. Um, that's our O3, our S2, and our uh, HA. Um, and so this is this particular target is NGC 7822 and so let's get started. Um, what we're going to do is just minimize these off to the side uh, because we're really not going to work with these individual ones. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is create an RGB image in the SHO format. So we'll go to process, color management, and under channel combination, we'll click on that. And as you can see here, I have already aligned the channels for the red channel for the um, the uh, uh, S2, the green channel for the HA, and the blue color for the O3. And we're going to go ahead and generate that image. Alright, and then I'll close that. And I'll go ahead and rename this as SHO. Alright, and we're going to try I'll close that. We're going to try doing see what an auto stretch with the screen transfer function uh, with it uh, linked over here with all the channels linked pretty much just gives us an overall green, Im green image if we unlink it and hit it again we're gonna get more or less what I usually get as a starting point a general uh, generalized kind of greenish image or d different tones of greens um, and some yellows definitely having some uh, magenta stars popping in there you can see this one there and um, but this is overall a good starting point so since we like this as a starting point what we're gonna do is copy that to our histogram transformation so we'll drag it out here open it up make sure we hit the screen the, the auto auto stretch here and drag this onto our histogram transformation. We'll reset the image, close that out, and then we'll go ahead and apply that to our image. All right, so now that we have applied this um, stretch to our image, one of the first things I do is I extract a synthetic luminance for later on and mainly why I do this is because a lot of times when we are going to be um, using a lot of our color masks we're going to introduce a lot of noise and things that we don't uh, necessarily like in our image and this is going to be used to restore all that nice detail and so again if we zoom into the image you can see how uh, free of chromatic noise it is um, it's it's fairly a clean image overall uh, since it hasn't been manipulated too much and so uh, that's why I choose to use that luminance from the get-go alright so in order to transform or uh, kind of uh, tweak the colors on this image uh, what I mainly use is three masks and uh, three color masks and you can use whatever color mask that you like an experiment but the main ones I use are green uh, magenta and cyan or cyan whatever whatever it's called um, so we'll go here to scripts utilities color masks and we'll click on the first one is your magenta and I'll click here mask blur to three and that will give me a nice smooth mask um, so that when we apply any changes there don't 
introduce any kind of blotchiness to the image or anything like that. All right, so this is our magenta, and I'll put it off here to the side. And we'll go back to scripts, color mask, CN, and we'll generate this mask. Well, actually, I'll hit abort because uh, I forgot to blur the, the mask. So color mask, CN, one, two, three, and hit OK there. And here's our mask there. Scripts, utilities, color mask, and the green mask. All right, three for the blur. And so again, these are these are the main colors that I use to tweak tweak the colors in my images. Um, and I tend to like blues and golds. Um, all throughout my image and I, I tend to find that these uh, are masks that allow me to get to that to that stage there and so if you can see the difference in the masks they're all going to be targeting different different areas of the actual image um, and they're not going to be working you know, they're going to be working in different parts there for you so um, one of the first things we do once we've generated this is we're going to address our magenta. So go ahead and grab your magenta mask and put it onto that image. And we're going to go mask, show mask, and that will just allow us to view our image. So let's grab the curves transformation tool there. And Basically, we're seeing a lot of magenta, which is purples and blues, and we want to turn these these stars more blue. So let's remove some of the red, and you can see if we if we bump it all the way up, we introduce a lot of that red there that you see, and as we start to drag it down, we start removing some of that red. And you may have to do um, a couple of iterations of this in order for you to um, actually get to the point where you like it but you'll be able to start to see some of that uh, happening there um, and you may also choose to do simultaneously um, the RGB together just because as we decrease that red some of the the lightness fades fades away so in order to preserve the lightness we'll We'll bump up this just a little bit there. All right, and as we toggle things on and off, I can see how my stars are turning uh, blue. And also, particularly um, where this mask is, is working, where things are turning blue. So let's go ahead and, and zoom in here. And really, we see our stars are now blue that were previously magenta and I'm focusing on those two main stars there and if we toggle things back um, a couple times we can see how we started with that magenta star which is a, a star that we particularly don't want um, and don't care for as far as the color goes alright so now that we've addressed the magenta and the stars um, one of the uh, other mask that I will first use or the, the second mask I will use per se is our green so let's go ahead and apply that green mask there and just for for visual here you can look at the mask and see where where it's actually working at so let's go ahead and sh remove the view of the mask and let's start 
um, playing with the green colors. Now, obviously, for a green mask, if we're trying to remove green, you you can see how when you bump the green up, that's where it's mainly affecting our greens. And so you can choose to decrease a little bit of the green. And actually, in the RGB uh, channel there, um, you can bump this up. and do a little bit of a S curve on it um, and we're going to add a little bit more red so that we go ahead and eliminate a lot of that green color and so you can see that predominantly um, we're switching it from green to now more golds and, and yellows in this image which is which is usually the goal of, of what I like to see. So um, if we are happy with that, you know, we'll go ahead and apply it to the actual image. And this is just a preview of what it would do if we did that same thing again. So um, you may experiment with it and, and say, well, I want to remove, and I'll toggle this back on, which is our live preview. And say I want to remove a little bit more green there and possibly bump up that red just a tiny bit more in all the channels there just to lighten things up there. And again, toggling things on and off um, allows you to see uh, what you're actually doing there. And I'll go ahead and apply that there. All right, now once we go to our uh, last mask, which is the CN, we're going to go ahead and place it on there. And I'll refresh this here. And now again, we start to kind of see what, what things do. So again, trying to shift from, from greens, we are going to drop the green there um, and even drop the red and again because my goal is to go to a more blue color there um, and you can even bump some of the blue and bump some of that of the RGB there and kind of play around to see what what you like alright so let's go ahead and apply that there and for this particular cyan mask um, you can even go ahead and invert the mask and you can play around with the mask I mean the, the masks are there for you to to choose uh, to, to kind of experiment and I could show you how the mask this is gonna block all this from being um, since I've inverted the mask it's gonna block all that um, and let's see see what we can do here if we eliminate the uh, the green now and maybe a little bit of this red is too predominant there um, you can see how you know we're, we're, we're achieving that blue and and gold color into our image but still keeping a a, a dynamic range of, of colors there not not going to a fully just you know yellow and blue image or, or gold and blue image we have oranges yellows blues um, in in that image um, and just for 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 experimenting with things we can go ahead and, and see what that does and again from there we go to there
And again, we can go back and invert our mask and see if we can play around with this a little bit more. Add a little bit more blue. Take away a little bit more of that red. Even add a tiny bit of green there. Just gives it a little bit more dynamic range in that area. And again, this is this is totally up to you. You know what what you want to do um, with with the image. Alright, so at that point, um, let's say, you know, we're, we're happy with, with how that looks like. We'll go ahead and apply that there. Um, and let's zoom into this image and see what all this color masking has introduced. And so as you can see, you know, what, what used to look like very clean uh, data there, um, you can see that the color masking introduces a lot of chromatic noise um, that we are usually not very fond of and so we'll go ahead and want to clean that up um, in the next couple of steps here. Alright so once you're happy there with the color um, we go ahead and pull this mask up there um, and we're going to go ahead and hit the mask and we're going to remove any kind of mask there because what we're going to do now is apply uh, that original synthetic um, the luminance that we extracted as a luminance layer to restore the nice cleanliness of, of that data onto here um, and so make sure you have the chromatic noise reduction button hit on there and I usually will keep this at 0.5 and 0.5 and just go ahead and drag it over drop and let's see we see what it uh, oh. alrighty so this was from when I was working at, at the last time so just make sure that you click on the on the correct one there alright so this should do it now there All right, and what you may notice is that um, a lot of the brightness and contrast of your image may have gone down um, by doing this kind of luminance method. And if we toggle back and forth, you can see that our image details have kind of, even though we, we've cleaned up uh, a lot of that noise, things have kind of gone down to to a very... Um, you know, not non-contrast, maybe high in saturation uh, mode there. Um, and what what you're going to do now is actually use this same luminance and apply it as a mask. Um, and then we're going to hit it with a curve stretch, and let's see what what things do, what things happen here. All right, so we're going to do RGB. And then we're going to start bumping, bumping the, the contrast back up. And go ahead and 
hit OK. And what you may find is that some colors may be a little bit too saturated, uh, particularly the yellows may be there. And so you can selectively desaturate certain colors. Um, just go ahead and click on there and it would it will tell you where that where this color is too saturated so let's go ahead and set some anchor points there uh, we want to keep our oranges because we like the orange and let's go ahead and zoom out here and let's see what so I always like to increase the saturation so that I can see more or less where that target um, saturation is is happening. Now I'll come back down to normal, and then we'll start desaturating these colors here. And again, we'll toggle things on and toggle things off, and that to me looks looks a lot better now the key thing is make sure you you keep that mask on so that um, you know your your desaturation is done very in a, in a very subtle manner um, and not to not done in a, into not done uh, very aggressive there all right and so if we go ahead and toggle things back back from where we were you can see you know the, the yellow may be a little bit too saturated for the for the gas here and so toggling it back it, it just pulls back uh, a lot of that saturation in the yellow um, but if you look at the image you know a lot of that chromatic noise is is no longer there and our our image tends to be uh, a lot cleaner and let's go ahead and just toggle things back just a couple steps there and compare and we'll move forward there and you can see how a lot of that chromatic noise has, has definitely uh, been reduced there uh, from what we had alright at this point um, let's take a look at where our where our peaks are coming in so we can we can drop this back down a little bit here um, and notice that I, I deactivated the mask and then we're gonna enable the mask again and see if we can get a little bit more contrast there um, in the image And again, I try not to push, push all you know, push the contrast too much, to the point where the image uh, just looks overworked. Um, I look for just subtle changes, and again, um, I'm happy with that there. So I'll, I'll apply it, and then let's go ahead and use. Uh, remove the masks again and let's do a final script utilities dark stru dark structure enhance and see if this can pull in a little bit more um, detail in the in the dark dust lanes
and we'll toggle things back and forward. You can see you've, you've increased a little bit of the dust lanes darkness there and we'll do it back and forth. Um, and we can even reapply this luminance here and see if we can pull a little bit more contrast out of these uh, pillars here. So um, again, we'll click on there, see more or less where these peaks are coming in and we'll start put some anchoring points And let's toggle things on and off, on and off. Maybe pull back just a hair there. And let's see what that does here to our image. Back and forward. And back and forward. And that just kind of added a little bit more contrast there um, and I'll just tone it back just a little bit on that effect and do it there alright so that's how we go from taking a, a predominantly green image with all these magenta stars and just for just for comparison's sake, let me go ahead and um, channel combination. Let me go ahead and generate that image again there and compare it. So. You know, we have the, the essentially the around these guys here and move them over so that you guys can see um, you now we have the, the same image on the on the left and right um, just just using color mask and selectively um, changing changing the colors from some of these areas to, to get a little bit more detail and separation um, and dynamic range in those colors now uh, you'll notice that these color masks were generated without manipulating that that um, image that we first generated. A lot of people make the color mask as they make adjustments, but to me, I, I like to keep it. Um, I like to keep the color mask uh, from the beginning, from the original image, and that allows me to target all the different uh, structures in an image and and generate these kind of color schemes that that I really uh, I'm very fond of so hope this was uh, a little bit uh, helpful for you and seeing it how it's done um, and hopefully you can take away uh, and apply this uh, kind of technique to your Hubble palette images and um, if you have any comments I'd uh, love to hear them hope to help and have a good night